Well, Zilly Mizang, there's a new boogeyman on the scene, ain't there? And he's willing to take on all comers. Yes, after two destructive performances against Joe Joyce, we really do have to ask the big questions. What's next for him? How does he fare against the big four, the AJ Fury, Usyk and Wilder? If any of them ever fucking fight him. And yes, we're all wondering, really, how good is Mr. Zilly Zang? Well, let's see. Yes, let's get cracking. So then, back in April against Big Joe, hardly anyone saw it coming. The lethal left hand gave the juggernaut nightmare and the eye injury put the cherry on top, then roll on September. Joe stepped on the scales around 26 pounds heavier as we pretty much expected, but unexpectedly, Zhang put on 9 pounds as well. Now for me, I said, oh, aye, aye, this ain't a good move for old Zangy boy, what with his track record of getting double knackered in the back end of the fights. I said, yes, fair enough, Joe got a bit hammered last time, but he never went down, did he? This means he can take Zhang's lefty banger. Yeah, you'll see, people, watch Big Joe take Zhang into deep waters this time. Bring it on up, the jugs and uh yeah. Well, I got it double wrong, didn't I? I hold my hands up. Zhang was a force to be reckoned with once again, and Joe was simply not on the same level. Well done, Big Bang. You really are a big problem. Now, before we get onto Big Bang's future, double credit for Big Joe taking this rematch and handling both losses with pure class. But hats off to Zhang. He's a great fighter, and I'm sure he's going to be in some great fights next but I'm going to have to rebuild and, and yeah come back uh, go go a different route yes terrific no crying no excuses no oh someone sparked me water my costume was really heavy and it hurt me little legs didn't it no none of that being a baby about it bollocks just great sportsmanship which is why we love him now many are calling for him to retire saying enough's enough Joe but should he retire really well look at it like this Joe's lost twice to what we now know to be a top level heavyweight he's lost twice to a guy that wasn't cherry picked that wasn't a tick over whilst waiting for a world title fight. No. Zhang and Choice is what heavyweight boxing should be all the time, shouldn't it? And ultimately, this is what happens when you roll the dice. You might get beat. Now styles make fights and they're simply fighters that can't beat other fighters. AJ can't beat Usyk, Wilder can't beat Fury, and Joe can't beat Zhang. And that's it. But you know what? I feel like we hear it just too often these days. Once a fighter takes a loss or two, you get people going, oh yeah, they should retire. Just like they did to AJ after Usyk. What a load of muff. And on top of this, I've said it before, but there's just too much emphasis on keeping the zero on your record these days, which leads fighters to cherry picking and padding out their records. But when you don't cherry pick, and when you don't pad out your record, this is what might happen. So well done these two for putting it on the line for us fans and trying to smash fuck out of each other. We love it, we do. And I personally hope Joe comes again. Dubois too, Bacoli, yes, bring it on. Anyway, rant over. So yes, Big Bang Chinese power. How how did we not know he was this good? Well, to be fair, he has always been on the radar. He won silver at the Beijing Olympics. He's knocked out a whopping 21 of his 28 opponents. But unfortunately for him, his draw with Jerry Forrest and his loss to Hergovic really took the steam out of this man's rise. Even though he knocked Forrest down three times in three rounds and was deducted a point to get the draw, and many felt he was robbed against Hergovic, Zhang was simply put amongst the pack after these blemishes and discarded amongst the big boys. However, However, now he's propelled himself into the mix. He wants all the smoke and he's got Big Frank on his side, ain't he? Yes, the old Don King trick from Frankie boy. See you later, Joseph. Hello, Zhang, me old mate. Sign on that dotted line, bruv. Yes, you've had a Chinese with Big John, but come with me and grab a couple of prawn crackers, me old champ. Let's talk about who you're fighting next, if you know what our chicken chow means. Spring roll on the future, bruv. Yes, fucking bosh. Frank's got him signed up on a promotional deal, Double Lively, and his next move will be very, very interesting. In. So who could it be? And how does Big Bang fare against the Big Four? Well, let's have a look. The first name rumbling after an Eddie Hearn interview is old AJ. Now, it wouldn't be the first time these two have faced off in the ring. They first met in the quarterfinals of the 2012 Olympic Games, and an informed Joshua managed to land an absolute perler that put Mr. Big Bang on his arse. AJ went on to win by a clear decision, and of course, ended up winning the gold medal. But how does it play out now? Well, AJ has only fought two deep decent southpaws in his pro career to date, old Prince Charles Martin, and of course Usyk. Charles walked the earth like a god and ended up walking straight into a couple of fucking fists, and as we know Usyk took him to school. 
twice. Now he's on record saying southpaws are a major difficulty for him like a lot of fighters do, but that really doesn't bode too well when Zhang is not just any southpaw. The fact that he can knock out the man originally considered to have possibly the best chin in heavyweight boxing means he simply is one of the hardest hitters in the world. And judging by AJ's record, he more than likely would be the hardest puncher that AJ has ever faced. Now we are still seeing signs of a more tentative and reluctant AJ in the ring. The trigger takes a while to get pulled. The punches in bunches are rarely seen. In a nutshell, he seems more cautious of going to war. Nothing like the Dillian White fight, for example. But for this fight in particular, that actually may not be such a bad way to go about things. Because if there's one thing we know about Zhang, he's absolutely lethal early doors. Putting Jerry Forrest down three times in three rounds, knocking Hergovic down in round one, and of course terrorising Joe for six rounds back in April, then cleaning him out by the third in the rematch. So yes, there's one thing for sure, you do want to be very wary of that lefty banger, especially for the first half of the fight, because if one does get through, well we can all agree, it probably is curtains for Joshua. However, if it doesn't land, then later in the fight, AJ may be able to exploit the main weakness of Zhang. Yes, of course, his engine. If Joshua can take him into those late rounds, and Zhang starts to show that exhaustion and slower reactions, then Joshua might be able to land an absolute haymaker on him. And we all know Joshua can certainly bang as well. He has more than enough in his arsenal to get a knockout. On top of this, we have to remember that Joshua has beaten this man before. He's put him on the canvas before. Before. Yes, fair enough, it was more than a decade ago, but he's still bound to have an element of confidence there, as well as age on his side, because Zhang is certainly no spring chicken. Now, Zhang versus Fury is an interesting one as well, because Fury reckons he's got the secret to beating Zhang. Then again, he also said he'd fight Joshua for free on free to air television, so I don't know what to fucking believe. However, regardless of what he says, it really isn't straightforward for Fury due to the old Southpaw issue once again. He may have fought a few Southpaws in his career, including Joey Abel. Pianetta and Otto Wallin, but let's put Abel and Pianetta to one side for a minute for the obvious reason they're both a bit fucking pants. But Otto Wallin actually is a decent fighter, and we all know that was not an easy night's work for Luke. Firstly, we know that Zhang hits much harder than Wallin, so there's bound to be some sticky moments in there for him. On top of this, Tyson ain't quite got the movement in the ring that he used to have. He's a little more stand and tradey these days, which will do Zhang a bit of a favour. And as we know, you don't want to be trading with Big Bang too often. However, one thing Tyson is a genius at is adapting to fights, making the necessary adjustments for whoever he's in the ring with, and you're bound to see Fury utilising this as the rounds go on. But most of all, we can't forget the fact that he's been in there with Wilder, who is the official king of punch power, and since Fury's taken what he had, since he still has that incredible boxing brain, this will surely place him a firm favourite for that fight. Though it's not a foregone conclusion, however we'll probably have to wait for that one because Fury's fighting John Jones in a cage next, ain't he? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yes, then we're left with Usyk and Wilder. Well, the Wilder fight is just a shootout, and it there's just absolutely no way these two hear the final bell. Someone is getting sparked out like a mad thing in it. Say less, cuz yes, my youth. Sorry. Yes, ultimately Zhang's not a tentative fighter, and neither is Deontay. So it is only a matter of time before one man lands an absolute peach. And to be honest, I simply don't know how you could call that fight. I mean, it's a double exciting edge of your seat thriller just sign me up for it bruv I'm fucking all over it and then finally there's Usyk the most agile of the top four the sharpest mover and arguably the most skilled boxer now he may significantly lack the power the other three possess but much like the AJ fights Zhang will have a hard time landing that equaliser and on top of this Usyk at his best has the skills to pepper Zhang and move around him all night which as Bellew says simply wears you out it drains you as the rounds go on which is never going to be a good thing for Big Bang and his engine. But also, this fight is double interesting with both men being southpaws. Usyk hasn't fought a southpaw since fighting Glowaka Kakaki and Muchachucha Nanu back in 2016, and Zhang last fought a fellow southpaw in Jerry Forrest back in 2021. Being honest though, I'd imagine I'm not alone in thinking this still plays into Usyk's hands, simply because of his boxing brain and his movement. You can bet your bum hole that Zhang will be going to the body like Dubois did, as that's clearly one of Usyk's failings. But whereas Zhang won the lottery with a slower paced juggernaut standing in front of him in both fights, Usyk will very rarely be there for the taking. So yes, Big Bang has arrived and he does make me double moist for all four of these fights. But yes, let's hope for the love of God.
God one of them does actually fucking fight him, because we need to see it. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, you mint bunch of dabble sorts. How does Zhang fare against the top boys? Yes, all right then, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'm out now, laters, all right then, bish and bosh.